Faith leads to action. When we keep our eyes fixed on Jesus, he empowers us to walk with confidence and purpose. Today, Christine Kane, Holly Wagner, Dr. Dee Dee Freeman, and Christy Wright are joining us. We are learning how to follow only where he leads. Come on, let's talk about it. Okay, I've got a friend and she's absolutely hilarious, man. She is always like hearing from God. She's like, Christine, God told me today what colour top to wear. God, and like, this has like been going on for years. And, and I'm like, you know, I don't really think God even cares that much what colour top you wear. But you know, like there's the, those people that God is always telling them, man, you've got to wear the green top or the blue top. And should I go to the store or shouldn't I go to the... I mean, they're, they're like, so I, I mean, I love them and I love this person with a passion, but... I think sometimes we try to over-spiritualize the direction from God, like as if he cares what I'm going to eat in this meal or, you know, what I'm going to do. So I, for me, I find that generally, listen, I, I'm, I'm a person, I, I like spiritual disciplines because they keep me disciplined. Right. So I find that the major way God speaks to me is through his word. Mm -hmm. And I get up and it's it's nothing even um, big deal. I don't sort of wake up every morning and go, Lord, open right. up and speak to me. That's not how I, that's not how I do it. Okay. <laughs> so it's like, I'm working through the books of the Bible. Like it's, it's, it doesn't even sound that spiritual. It's just like, we're just reading it through and I, but I'm expecting that as I am diligent yes. with the Lord every day, yeah. that God is going to speak to me through his word. This word's living, this word's active, that God's going to speak to me. And then there are times where I'm sensing something in my heart, whether it's got to do, uh, let's use a big one, when we move from Australia to America. Now, that's not a small thing. Mm -hmm. I've got two daughters, you know, yeah. when we're, my husband is actually the one that was feeling the, the stirring. Mm -hmm. And when he first told me, I was like, get thee behind me, Satan. Yeah. I'm like, are you kidding me? I lived in <laughs> Sydney, Australia on the beach, like really? Really? And so it was, um, it was not, but so then what we did, that begins, and this is how I feel that the Lord speaks. He's stirring, he's obviously speaking something to my husband. Um, he brings it to me. We then have um, a very close group of board members that we would take this to and say, this is what we feel. What do you, I'm gonna submit something like that. I'm not just gonna uproot my family <laughs> across the world, or right. I'm not just gonna start A21 or start Propel because I think it's a great idea. I'm gonna go to certain people and go, this is what I feel feel. Um, and this is, you know, what do you think? You know me, you know God, you know our gift mix. I mean, there's a whole lot of stuff around here. And um, I don't find that God is moving me every day with something massive. When I say to you, my 30 odd years of following Jesus, I don't have a whole lot of suddenlies. And most of the suddenlies have taken about 15 years where people go, suddenly there's Chris. I'm like, honey, I've been working 15 years back there and you just saw it. I remember when people first started seeing me in America, they're like, oh, where did Christine come from? I'm going, honey, 25 right. years in the back of Australia. That's where, you, just because you suddenly know right. that I'm where I am doesn't mean that that happens. So a lot of times, I think we are all sitting here waiting for God to, you know, drop something out of the sky or, wait, or we're thinking some big suddenly is going to happen without realising that the steps of a righteous person are ordered by the Lord. They, they, God mm -hmm. takes steps. We all want an elevator yep. to the top, man. Exactly. We want to get in the elevator, push the button and go. And there's no elevators in the Bible. Yep. There's the no. steps of a righteous person. Walk and I find... Yeah. Th th that it, it is. It's not. And you know, I've, I, I believe in the um, prophetic and I, I believe in the last year we've seen just how that can be cray cray as well. And a lot of times when people go, I feel it's God, oftentimes I, I feel that you're just having indigestion. And so I think if it does not come into alignment with the word of God, with wise counsel, there is wisdom in a multitude of counselors, mm -hmm. the Bible says. Mm -hmm. And I'm not saying that there are not times, there have been some times, it's rare but there have been a couple of times where I've just known it's God and you know, it's, no one around me has said no, mm -hmm. but they haven't exactly said yes either. And there are so, so there will be the times where you go, I have got, I know this is the Lord. I know you've given me an orange light and maybe you're saying no, but can I just say, I don't think in my experience, and I'll open this up to the rest of you girls. I don't think that's the way the, that God operates in that everyone's saying no, but you're going, I'm going. I don't think that's the normal way we would get direction every, for our lives. 
Absolutely. I mean, even the Bible tells us to seek wise counsel. Why would we, yeah. you know, ask for help or insight on something and then don't take the advice that others will give us? Right. I mean, safety is found mm -hmm. in that, right? Um, I think about yeah. even me, how when I just decided to go back to school and I had a lot of things going on at the time, but it was like I had a peace on the inside of me. And so maybe God didn't speak to you audibly or God didn't come to you, Holy Spirit led you or your family members didn't, you know, confirm it or your pastor didn't say anything to you. But there could be a peace that resides yeah. on the inside yeah. of you when you make a decision and you just go for it. And then you would know if it was God because you'll see the fruit of it, you know, later. So yeah, you're right. I mean, he talks to us all differently. It's hard too because it's bad. it's kind of like with other topics we've talked about this week. You're holding both. Sometimes the Lord will confirm yeah. you, affirm you through wise counsel, mm -hmm. and it's over time. Mm -hmm. There are other times where God, at least in my experience, will ask you to do something that doesn't make sense to people. <laughs> and for me, sometimes I don't always have these people going yes and amen. They're like, "Is that a good idea?" Like Chris, like Chris, it's possible that you would have decided to move to the United States because God called you, and all your family and friends are like. Are you sure? Don't leave Australia. Mm -hmm. And so I think yeah. that's hard because sometimes we need that discernment. But I'll tell you, yeah. in my experience, the extremes I see people go to, and I, I'm guilty of doing this myself, when we want to take action, mm -hmm. we tend to have one of two extremes. When we're talking about these taking steps of faith with the Lord, we either swing to the extreme of we're so scared to take the wrong step that we take no steps. Mm -hmm. And yeah. we're sitting there and we're praying and praying and praying and 15 years goes by and we're still praying, waiting for Gabriel to appear to us in our living room and tell us exactly what to do. Mm -hmm. The yeah. other extreme is what I'm guilty of, which yeah. is a surprise to no one, where we get one clue <laughs> from the Lord. And we're like, oh, got it, I'm out of here. We're like, you still with me? Are you, keep, are you keeping up back there? And we run ahead. That's so me. So it's so hard to stay in step with the Lord. But I think what he asks us to do is take faith, steps of faith of just what we is right in front of us. He's not gonna show us the whole staircase, Absolutely. but he can say, be faithful with this step I'm asking you to do, but take those yeah. steps because for those people sitting on the couch waiting for Gabriel to appear, I'm going, sister, you gotta get moving. God mm -hmm. can turn a, a, a moving yeah, car. Right. He can't turn a stalled, stalled vehicle. Mm -hmm. So it's on us to yeah, take yeah. these steps, but not run ahead. But I, I really believe that if you seek the Lord in those steps of faith, knowing just what limited information, you know, he won't let you go wrong. Mm -hmm. I believe if you seek the Lord, he right. won't. Now, if you run off on your own, he'll let right. you run it's off a cliff. Right. But if you take those steps of faith, knowing what you know, just with what's in front of you today, I don't, I don't think you can go wrong if you're seeking him, right. you know? Even defining wise counsel, like we use that phrase, but it's like, so what is wise? Who is wise counsel? What is wise counsel? And so for me, if I want to just put it out there, you want to get counsel from people who are further up the road than you. Right, who've navigated right. some part of this road or have a little bit of history, not the people at the same place you are. Mm -hmm. Because they're just, they're, they don't know. And then also, you, to me, you want to get direction from people who need nothing from you, mm -hmm. who there's no strings attached to it. Right, sometimes I think people have made the mistake of only having people that they're paying around them. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. so when they ask for wisdom, then all these people are too afraid to challenge a decision or a thought right. because, you know, they might get fired or let go or no longer mm -hmm. be in the in crowd. And so I just think you have to be careful that the wise counsel around you, and we all need it, but are people who will tell you the truth, mm -hmm. That's right? True. And, and, not, and they're also who aren't jealous of you, <laughs> like people who aren't threatened by your success. Yeah. So it's people further up the road than you who can cheer you on and yet challenge you and encourage you. So to me, that's just a little picture of what I would think uh, wise counsel is. It's not your, it's not necessarily your peers, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? Because they're right. running at the same pace. You want somebody who's perhaps a little ahead of you. Um, th you know, then I started thinking, when, yep. when do I ask God for direction? And it's usually when I'm in trouble. Right? Really? It's no. Like, oh, no. Lord. Not me. <laughs> <laughs> now what do I do? <laughs> not me, Holly. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's why I'm bringing it to you. 
I'm, I'm going to ask God before I get in trouble. That's yeah. why a lot of us get in trouble and then we justify it like this was our pain for our purpose. It's like if you would have acknowledged him in all of your ways, he said he yep. would direct your path. Of course, he can use your pain for your purpose. He can use anything for your purpose. He can use whatever it is that you've gone through. But was that the original intent of the leadership purpose of God. No. I believe God wanted (laughs) us to just follow him, (laughs) seek him first. Yep. That's what he said. In all their ways. And then what? All these things shall be added unto us. I I haven't seen, I mean, of course, you know, stories where people in the scripture have gone through things and we have made a doctrine of that and justify, you know, our failures based upon things that have gone on. But come on, like, when do we start asking God first? Yep. I have been there where I have started some things and it was totally not God and it was a complete failure. It was a disaster, if you will. But then I got to the place, I said, okay, God, this is my fault. I take full responsibility of where I am. You are where you are today by the decisions that you have made. And I wanted to make better decisions so I could get to a better place. So now I just say, God, tell me what to do. Just tell me, I, I don't want to, yeah. I don't want those failures. I don't want that heartache and that pain. <laughs> Will you go through stuff? Absolutely. I know, you know, because we're yeah. in this world, the Bible says yeah. that we're going to experience trials and tribulations. So I understand that. So don't come at me. I understand that. But still, <laughs> there are some things that we bring on ourselves. One of the things I'm so guilty of too, is a lot of times I'm so busy talking to God about that direction that I need or whatever the thing is <laughs> that I don't listen. Right. And I know that's so simple, but when I read um, Priscilla Shire's book, Discerning the Voice of God, the first chapter mm-hmm. is to listen. I'm like, huh, <laughs> listen, okay. But it's amazing how just simple things like listening, asking yourself, does this align with God's word? He's mm-hmm. never gonna direct you in, a, in somewhere that's against his word or his character, his nature. To your point, Holly, are these people considered wise counsel, or are these just my friends that don't get it? You know, and and trying to put it through these multiple different filters will help you have that discernment of the steps to take. It's not a perfect formula. God can't be put in a box of a formula. Mm -hmm. He's going to lead us all differently. But there are simple things that we can learn from and do to really make sure this is the step God wants me to take and taking action over time. Like you said, Chris, that you're not just going to completely, you know, jerk your car off the road in an, in an instant that it's it's well thought out. Mm-hmm. I think what we're presupposing here is that you actually want to hear what God has to say, because I think one of the challenges that we have is that if we're honest, we actually really care more what our friends are saying than what God is saying yep. or what somebody else go. is saying than what God is saying. And and I want to be totally transparent here. And it would be decades ago now, but I would say in my early 20s, I, I literally have in a prayer journal where I said to God, very honestly, because I'm like you, DD, it's just like, this is what you get. And I went, God, I am honest. I actually, and there was a person's name, I actually care what this person thinks and says more than I care what, it matters more to me. So can you change, I know this sounds so basic to everyone, but I'm like, can you change my heart so I actually care what you want more than what, and I have found myself in different situations in life now that I've revisited that in various forms that I'm like, God, if I'm honest, I actually care what that group of people thinks or what that thinks more than I care what you think because Jesus, I actually think that you're more merciful. And so I think you're going to be okay yeah. and you're going to forgive you're me okay. no matter what. Mm. But they, they, yeah, they're like, and, and, and I mean. know as soon as I get to that place, if I'm, yeah, they're mean and you're not. And so yeah. I have to get to that place where I go, God, you're going to have to dig deeper so that I actually it matters more to me, you, because I know you so well. It's almost like taking your husband for granted. If it's Mm -hmm. like that, it's like, oh, I know you'll be right. So I'm going to care more about that. Mm -hmm. I've had to, as you walk in that road to obedience with Jesus more and more, I am more unlikely, we're we're all still uh, subject to temptation, but I'm more unlikely at this phase, at 55 years old, at this phase of my ministry life to go, I'm going to go do something really dumb and, yeah. and walk away from God and <laughs> right. ignore the Lord. So right. what it's, how it's going to be judged in my own heart is in little ways that nobody sees. Do I really care what 
God thinks more than what they think or how I present that. And am I going to listen to that voice of God? And especially when you're living a public life and it's a very visible life, um, you go, only God really knows. And so then I've still got to ask God to go keep going deeper. It's just like in a marriage. I'm just not going to take Nick for granted because right. he's going to be cool and they're not going to be cool. And I need to be really careful in that thing so that I can still keep hearing God and God can keep trusting me to take steps going forward. I don't, I don't know if that all makes sense to you all. But one of the cool things about that example, Christine, is you were able to have that deeper layer of intimacy with the Lord and have him shape you and discipline you and prune you, all those examples in scripture, because you asked for it and were honest with yourself. And I think that is a very hard step for people to take for me to go, okay, Lord, search me and know my thoughts, mm -hmm. purify my heart. That sounds nice. Mm -hmm. It's a great worship yeah. song. It's a great scripture. Yeah. But when he does that, it'll hurt a little yeah. bit. It'll sting a little mm -hmm. bit. It'll go, oh man, you're, yeah. you know, when, when God brings that to mind or shows you with like, you know, I, I joked earlier about how the Lord will show me like what, what is wrong with me that I need to work on versus judging other people. Mm -hmm. That's a painful process. The discipline, no discipline at the time yeah. seems pleasant, but painful. Mm -hmm. However, it produces a harvest of righteousness. The righteousness occurs not just because of the discipline process, but because you cooperated, submitted, were honest with yourself. And I think that can be difficult to do, but it's so worth it in the long run because of not only how you grow in your faith in the Lord, but how that even pours into all your other relationships, you know? Sure. I think sometimes the hardest thing for me in just in the hearing from God is, is when you hear no. Right? When, I, when I'm expecting a yes, because it all lines up. And I just remember this, maybe around this time last year, or about a year ago, whatever, I was preparing and it got accepted into a doctoral program. I was excited about it and ready and start, got some of the books and started reading. And then there was just a number of people, that wise counsel in my life, that just said, um, you know, Holly, maybe it would be a good idea to postpone this a year to defer your enrollment for a year. And I'm like, no, you know, it's like, no, la, 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 la. And then I just had to be still with that. And I realized that was actually God protecting me. And then there's some big things that happened in our world that were, that needed me to not be in school this last year. So it was all a good thing. But in that moment, right. what I heard was, don't do it. And, and so I think sometimes that's not, different personalities perhaps are different. But for me, when I see the red light, that makes me just want to do it even more, which is not a good thing. That's not a good quality I have. I'm not even saying that. Hearing no is not always my favorite thing, but it's just as much protection yeah. as hearing a yes. Absolutely. Because I can look at yeah. it like a denial, if you will, is just a divine delay. It's just you know, gratification is just put off until later. It doesn't mean that it will never happen. It may be now because God is in our tomorrow today. He already knows what you need to do right now to prevent you from, you know, failing later. Just think you could have went to school and maybe lost a bunch of money because you weren't able to finish at this time or whatever. Your mind could have been so many different places, but he knows exactly where we yeah. will be later. And if we can acknowledge him, he'll protect us. It's like we get ourselves That's uncovered. So true. You know, I love that because even, even Holly, you even referred to it. There are things that might have happened last year or maybe didn't happen. So you can be doing all you know to do with the best intentions, with thinking, you know, this is God uh, is going to bless this. This is, you know, we're stepping out in faith and mm -hmm. we're going to do that. And all of a sudden that door shuts. You just think, what the heck was that? You know, if that wasn't faith, right. I'm not sure what it was. But then looking back at that, I, we had a thing that happened even in 2020 that we were just like, going, well, really, that didn't, that didn't happen, you know? But I was always, look, we made that step of faith. Mm -hmm. God will account that to us as righteousness. Mm -hmm. We were willing to go there when it was impossible. And then we said to each other the other day, my God, if that would have happened, we would have done this and we would be in so much pain right now mm -hmm. because we would have invested into films. Well, the film industry just went to pot yes. last year, <laughs> you know? So God always knows what's gonna happen. He always protects us. And I want to encourage you that if you have stepped, I think today the, the, the main thing is that faith takes action. God always says, you do this and I'll do that. 
You step out, I'll catch you. I've got you, you, do, you go first, I'll protect you. So he's always telling us to come. You come and I'll be there. So that's the good news. And so no matter what God has called you to do, I believe that if you step out in faith, believing that it's accounted to you as righteousness, whether it happens or not, God knows he wants to see his children. He says, the righteous walk by faith. Mm -hmm. If we always knew what was gonna happen and just waited for it, that wouldn't be faith. If we always knew what was gonna happen, it wouldn't take faith. And that's what he calls us to do. The righteous walk by faith. They live by faith. They don't live by their circumstances. They don't live by what they see. They live on what the word of God says. And he says to go and I'll meet you there. So I think we have to have faith, you guys, in, in our calling, in our purpose, reaching out to those around us for accountability, reaching out going, am I crazy or not? <laughs> you know, because a lot of times God does ask us to do crazy things. Um, and, then, and then listen, listen to God and listen to those around us. It's all, that's all good, good advice, what everyone said today. I think that's so right. And I look at, I, I'm thinking of the no. And when Holly, uh, you were talking, and I'm sure that's um, really ministering to somebody today because the no is the hard thing. And sometimes the no, when it comes to relationships, no to walking through uh, doors, it is very, very difficult. Um, and I think it's right to say that. I, I'm thinking back in 20 early 2017, um, there was something in a friendship that um, I had. And I remember saying to the Lord, can these bones live? You know, the Ezekiel thing that it had reached this sort of end point. And I, I can tell you as clear as I've heard anything, I heard no. It so devastated me. I think it took me three years because I was like, Maybe, maybe yes. Maybe let me show you, God, how this could be <laughs> fixed or how, how this could help or this could do. And I think um, I prolonged my own pain, the, the length of the pain, that had I just accepted God's no, that I would have, I, would have, I, I think I could honestly say I probably would have saved myself three years of very deep pain and very deep hurt. And I think then for, I mean, that was just in this case, I think other people that may be pursuing a relationship with somebody and God has said no. And then you're, you, you end up in such a painful place um, relationally that we have to, and now, that was 2017, we're now in 2021. I look at where uh, this person has landed in 2021 and now I see why God said no. And um, I think, wow, wow. Had I, had I been able to accept that and not go, but God, it could have been this and this would be so good for the kingdom and this could yeah. happen here. And I had all my ideas that in my heart and my soul, I didn't break a soul tie that I should have. Mm -hmm. um, then God, God was actually trying to protect me from a whole lot of pain. Now, I still walked in obedience to it, but my soul was connected in a way that um, right. needed to be let go. So I'm just saying that to someone that um, when we're talking about following God, it's sometimes relationally or a job or a ministry and, and it it's just was time to move on. Um, and moving on is not always, I'm moving in a great step of faith to, to go forward yeah. into it. Sometimes the moving on is, wow, I'm moving on to let go. I'm moving on to, and it's mm -hmm. deeply painful. Right. That's the person I want to speak to yeah. uh, right now because I get that pain. And, I, and when you're loyal, it's so hard to let go sometimes, but you can't let your loyalty yeah. to God yep. uh, be superseded by loyalty to people. So that moving on is sometimes really, really challenging. So let me pray for you, Father. I thank you that you're always guiding us. You're always directing us. Um, and Lord, I pray specifically for those people right now that need to have the courage to let go of certain things. Um, and Lord, that you would give them the courage and the strength to do that and that they would trust you in that, that Lord, you care for them, that you love them, that your grace will catch them. <laughs> it will catch them, Lord. Yeah. And. Um, what you have will be better. It will be better, it will be greater and different. So Father, I pray for trust. It always takes trust to move forward, whether it's to move forward in faith, I'm gonna take the land or to move forward 
with a bit of fear, I've got to let go of some stuff. It all comes back to trusting you. So Father, help us to trust you. I pray in Jesus' name. Jesus. Amen, Lord. Amen. Amen. I hope you enjoyed this video. Subscribe today and you'll never miss a new upload. And don't forget to check out our Better Together shop. Thanks for being a part of our community.